Hi, thanks for listening in. My name is Carolyn Coffey. I'm a PhD candidate in environmental engineering. And today I'd like to share my research that combines anaerobic technologies for energy efficient wastewater treatment. Conventional wastewater treatment in the United States focuses on aerobic biological processes and resource removal. This is energy intensive and requires significant amounts of oxygen to convert the organic carbon to carbon dioxide. Aerobic microbiology also produce a significant amount of biosolids, which are expensive to treat and remove. Uh, however, these systems are reliable and robust and have been implemented across the country. Applying anaerobic processes like anaerobic digestion to mainstream wastewater treatment, the focus shifts to energy and resource recovery. Anaerobic metabolisms redirect organic carbon to produce energy rich biogas. In doing this, we can also decrease or even eliminate the need for aeration and thus reduce energy costs associated with wastewater treatment. Anaerobic metabolisms also generate a fraction of the biomass compared to aerobic metabolisms, which dramatically reduces the amount of biosolids that require treatment and removal. Anaerobic technologies are far underutilized in mainstream wastewater treatment. Uh, and are typically used in side stream processes. Current work at MINES investigates a pilot scale anaerobic baffled reactor or ABR for low energy treatment of raw domestic wastewater from the MINES Park apartment complex. Organic carbon is redirected um, and converted to methane and carbon dioxide. Uh, this diversion of organics also reduces the amount of sludge that's produced by the ABR. Um, which is shown in the photo here on the left. And the system has operated for over five years now and biosolids have never been intentionally wasted. The ABR consists of three upflow anaerobic sludge blankets operated in series in 12 foot tall PVC columns. Uh, the system was designed and constructed by Andy Fluger in 2015. Raw wastewater flows upwards through each sludge blanket into the bottom of the next compartment. Microorganisms in each sludge blanket convert organics into that methane-rich biogas. The fourth compartment is an anaerobic fixed film reactor and it contains a bunch of floating plastic biofilm media that look like pasta wheels. Um, these encourage biological growth and help retain that beneficial biomass in the system. Across the compartments of the ABR, we see a 60 to 80% reduction in biological oxygen demand and chemical oxygen demand, uh, which can be measured to estimate the organic content of wastewater. The ABR also removes nearly 90% of influent total suspended solids, or TSS. ABR approaches EPA secondary treatment standards for wastewater effluent of 30 milligrams per liter for BOD and TSS. However, these wonderful anaerobic metabolisms fail to address nutrients, which I'll get to in a moment. Uh, so this figure shows ABR effluent, total suspended solids shown in this green line. Um, organics measured as biological oxygen demand shown by the blue line that ends here in the middle and temperature, this lighter orange line. So in 2019, an increased retention of biosolids was observed, which prevented the ABR from its typical seasonal exceeding of the EPA secondary standard of 30 milligrams per liter. Uh, there was also an, a corresponding increase in the sludge bed height over this period of time, which likely helped retain some of those influence solids. So as I started saying, the major drawback of these kinds of systems is that they fail to address nutrients. So the ABR requires some kind of subsequent treatment process to address nitrogen and phosphorus. My work will specifically address the nitrogen component. So the key microbial players in conventional nitrogen removal processes are aerobic ammonia oxidizers, which, and nitrite oxidizing bacteria. So together these provide nitrate from ammonia for heterotrophic denitrification. Heterotrophic meaning the process requires organic carbon. 
Now, the ABR effluent poses some significant challenges when it comes to nitrogen removal. Nitrification is an autotrophic process that requires significant amounts of oxygen, which could negate upstream energy savings of the ABR. Denitrification is heterotrophic, like I said, so it requires organic carbon, which the ABR has just removed upstream. So denitrification also produces significant amounts of biosolids, which will again, require additional management and treatment and may negate the upstream efforts in the ABR. So let's go back to this block diagram of nitrification, denitrification. If we eliminate the nitrate production and heterotrophic denitrification, we can then reduce our oxygen requirement from nearly 4.6 milligrams of oxygen per milligram of nitrogen to 1.8. And instead, we can partially nitrify our influent ammonia to nitrite and rely on another autotrophic process that doesn't require organic carbon called anaerobic ammonia oxidation, or ANAMOX, which uh, uses ammonia and nitrite as the electron acceptor to produce nitrogen gas. So if we combine these two biological processes in a single stage reactor, um, by relying on biofilm segregation of these microbial metabolisms. So obligate anaerobic ammonia oxidizers re reside on the inner layer of the biofilm, while aerobic ammonia oxidizers are situated on the outer layer of the biofilm. Uh, to follow the Mines Park ABR, a 10 liter bioreactor was constructed and plumbed to compartment three. And much like the bioreactor shown here, um, the reactor is heated to 30 degrees C and contains inline sensors for DO and temperature. Uh, grab samples were analyzed for nitrogen speciation, alkalinity, solids, and organics. Total ammonia entering this process is consistently less than 70 milligrams per liter, which is an order of magnitude lower than what processes like this typically will receive. Uh, the reactor is completely mixed by an overhead mixer to mobilize the bulk fluid and the media through the system. Preliminary results have been very promising and demonstrate up to 90% ammonia removal with little nitrite accumulation, which can be an indicator of anamox inhibition. We did see a little more nitrate accumulation uh, than expected but this is likely just due to uncontrolled aeration and high DO in the reactor, which can benefit nitrite oxidizers. Anamox do generate a small amount of nitrate when they synthesize their biomass. So we do expect to see a little bit of nitrate in this system. Current conclusions for this project show that partially anoxic deammonification is feasible for treating the ABR effluent and removing that ammonia that's coming out of the system. Though there are still a number of questions left unanswered. Um, so future work will continue to characterize reactor performance um, and hopefully we'll start to elucidate some of the other contributing stoichiometries to deammonification. Um, everything I talked about today kind of assumes that the only microbial metabolisms occurring in the system are aerobic and anaerobic ammonia oxidation, but in reality we have residual organic carbon in that system that's likely providing some, likely encouraging some heterotrophic growth in the system as well. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for listening in and I hope you enjoy the rest of grads.